Okay, guys, welcome back. I hope you guys had a good spring break, had a good break from school. Um, this today will be a soldering lecture. So first announcement, this is for, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry, it's, it's not that bad. Um, this is the first announcement, don't freak out. This is like, if you read the lab spec, it's just like a lot of logistical stuff us making sure that you get started on the soldering or if you don't have the materials yet at least get that uh sorted and presented to us um and also some logistical stuff so i'm just showing this here first for the people who are going to be re-watching the lecture because this is the most important thing um yeah so there's going to be a lot of announcements here for ranging from like small logistical stuff to it's overall things. So um, we're going to go over what the quarter will look like. So what our kind of curriculum will be this quarter. Yes, the titling Tuesdays. You'll figure out what that is later on. Um, the, the expectations for you and your team. And this means how what counts as completion for AP, especially if you're concerned about the deposit and the return of that. I will outline very clearly what the criteria for that is and also the expectations for checkoffs. Then there's the shipping, which already happened. And hopefully you guys should have that. But if you don't have the shipping stuff to you yet, then we you should let us know. Um, and then ordering, soldering, then the financial logistics of this and how we can help you guys with that. Um, and then lastly, it's just a small thing where information will be posted this quarter. Um, yeah, let's get into all of this. <laughs> uh, yeah, so th this is like the exciting, this is hopefully the quarter where everything that we've done kind of accumulates into the reason you join AP, right? So uh, the, the, I hope that you guys join AP for the goal of making a drone that can, that can fly and getting the experience of what that might look like from start to finish. Um, so you guys have already done most of the, the work beforehand for the electrical part. Um, so, so what we need to do to finish it off is one, to solder. And you get two weeks to program it. Um, and this uh, means like programming your initial like flight control and testing all that. Um, then we'll have this extensions project section, which we'll talk uh, explain more in the, the next part, which will take three weeks. And this overall will be, uh, did I miscount? I think programming might be three weeks. We'll see in the schedule. It's, this is a rough, rough outline. Um, and then we'll have a final like judging and a post AP celebration for finishing because this is, not an easy thing to do. So you guys should be really proud of yourselves, even to getting to where you are right now. Um, so next slide. Um, so, oh yeah, for, for, so for soldering and um, programming, that should be self-explanatory. It kind of works the way that we've done the past labs. So uh, you will have your labs and then you'll have checkoffs and those will be pretty standard. Um, you just need to follow the instructions in the lab and you, you'll get those done. Um, in terms of the extension project, so what the extension project is, is you're going to be analyzing kind of the, the shortcomings of uh, what you've done with your drone. Um, sorry, let me actually look at my notes real quick so I don't miss anything important. Um, so by the end of soldering and programming, you should be having your drone able to hover. Now, some teams will be able to accomplish this and some teams might not be able to accomplish this by that time. So uh, once you reach that time, your team will be required to make a technical presentation that describes the challenges and the shortcomings of what your current design is and what you plan to accomplish within the last three weeks of AP. So this would include like allocation of how you work across your team's goals and whatnot. So what you end up doing in this extension project highly depends on what you've been able to do beforehand. So this can be, if you haven't been able to make the drone hover, uh, would be revolving on that and you have to demonstrate the steps you'll take towards doing that. And then um, if you have finished that, then you have a, a broad range of what you can do and you can suggest new ideas and what you wanna do with your team uh, to us in your presentation and we'll, we'll be happy to let that happen and try to help you with that. Um, some uh, examples are having the directional inputs to your drone, so like programming to move in certain directions or implementing the radio and having an external controller and whatever you find is a technical area that you want to work on. Um, and there'll be more details about these technical presentations that uh, when the time comes. Um, and technical presentations are something that kind of come up both in like later interviews and also in jobs and I, I know that talking to one of my professors in the class that uh, I was teaching, this is something that he really highlighted was a skill that was not really a taught in UCLA. So hopefully we can give you some experience in that. Um, 
this is a detailed summary. I'm not going to read this, but it's basically what I said. This is just, if you're looking through the slides again, it has all the information I said. So the next slide. Right, so the judging, this is the fun part. Um, once you finish all this, your drone will be, be judged at the end of the quarter. Also, we'll have a kind of an event, and this is kind of how it would work normally in person as well, where they'll, they'll, all the drones will kind of like compete, I guess, and there will be a prize. There will be like numerous criteria, of course, like making it fly and like the technical stuff, as well as creative stuff, such as like dressing it up or like doing whatever you want with it to present your drone. Um, and whatever you end up doing with it, including what you do with your extension project. And then we will have a prize. We've already discussed a preliminary prize that at, at the least is the, you know, how you're supposed to return to us the um, nucleos and whatnot. We'll, we're basically, for the team that wins, you will, will get all of that for free, basically. Um, and there might be more. And if we don't end up doing that, then there will be an, another prize. But we'll probably end up doing that. Yeah, and who knows? Well, there might be even more if we have more in our budget. So we'll see. Um, typically, the EAA, which is the funding um, beforehand, they always give like up to two, two to three hundred dollars worth for like prizes. So we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, oh wait, yeah, before that actually, um, at the end of that, we're actually going to also have like maybe like a one hour thing. I'm not. I'm. I might make it mandatory depending on how interested you guys are. Of course, if no one wants to do this, then it's fine. <laughs> but we'll probably just like have like games and stuff. But if everyone ends up wanting to come and I can make it mandatory and that way we can plan some like fun, like competition kind of stuff or we can just do chill things, we'll see. Um, but yeah, definitely we, once you finish, you should celebrate. Okay, the reason we have this thing called titillating Tuesdays is because when me and Aaron were making the schedule, we realized that everything was going to be on due on Tuesday, except for this one, one checkpoint. Um, it, all our lectures will be on Tuesday, so this time, and hopefully you guys can all make it and you guys aren't like missing class or anything for this. Um, and our checkpoints will be on Tuesday. Um, now, I, I know that sometimes, uh, if you, we'll talk more about the lab hours later, but sometimes if you guys communicate to us like very early on beforehand, um, this is just like worst case scenario, we can do also on Wednesday, but we're going to try to get everyone on Tuesday and um, the, the postponing will have to come with reason. And also if there's too many people already postponed, we won't really allow it. <laughs> uh, so this is a general schedule. You'll see that we have two weeks for the, uh, the first lab um, and then two weeks for the second lab and then three weeks for the extension. So yeah, actually that was right because we have seven weeks total. Um, in, but after the extension project, you will have an update meeting so we can, you can update your progress. Uh, to work to us. And then on the Sunday is the, the judging. And um, yeah, the Sunday is the judging. And that's because if you guys have a lot of work you guys want to do beforehand to like grind and get your nucleos for free, you can work on Saturday. It's also kind of like a traditional thing, apparently. Um, in terms of expectations, uh, this, this is like how uh, for a completion of AP and um, the criteria for deposits. So th this will, th the requirements I'll explain in the next coming slides, it'll be different depending on your prior level activity. Um, most of you here, I think pretty much all of you here are like, I know have been working, actually all of you here, I know have been working on it closely. So you guys can watch the first one, but there are some people who aren't here um, who might be wanting to continue, uh, who will have a different uh, criteria. Uh, in terms of checkoffs, TLDR, just don't be late, come to lab hours and, and everyone has to be there. Um, but yeah, we'll, I'll talk more about the next slide. Okay. So we have like a few cases. Let's say I just thought, of, let's say we have a, a member called Maggie. Okay. And she, like you guys actively completed the first two quarters of the PCBs. Um, because of everything is done, you automatically receive 50% of your deposit back. No problem. Um, uh, in addition to that, if you want to get the rest of your deposit back, it'll be writing on this quarter. So one would be soldering, programming, and a reasonable attempt to get your uh, to get your drone to hover, which means all of the checkpoints prior to the extension project. And then the, the last part is the extension project. Um, it, let's say we have this guy called Richard, this guy, um, and he was inactive for PCB time, which is completely understandable because even in person, PCBs are a really hard thing to work uh, together on. Um, except 
when you go on to like work, you do have to review PCBs very often, but you won't really write like a draw and create PCB uh, designs together very often, and especially online. I understand if it was very difficult for this to happen. So um, we will allow uh, for people who haven't uh, participated as much in that section can come back and work with your team. Um, and then uh, you can get your full deposit, but the other 50% is distributed throughout and you have the same two uh, criteria for the, the next parts. Right, so some people, and I know there are some people here who have some specific scenarios um, and have no clue where you stand on, on what to do, come ask us because me and Aaron, we probably, we definitely have already thought about your specific case. Um, so it, we just didn't talk to you about it yet. So please reach out to us um, and, and we'll, we'll let you know what the situation is um, for that. Okay, checkoffs. Um, this quarter, we really, really hope that you guys come to our lab hours. Um, we're gonna make an effort to always be there. I know that I've kind of missed some last quarter, but we're kind of also required to be there much more stringently this quarter. Um, so definitely come to our lab hours. Uh, in the next slide I have, a, a uh, schedule of what our lab hours are. Um, the requirement is that all members have to be present. Now this includes like when you're soldering and stuff, we'll ask questions revolving around it. Um, and we'll likely ask the people who are not doing it because if you did it, we don't really have any questions to ask you. <laughs> so, and also not only that, especially I know a lot of you groups are like kind of friends with each other now. Um, you know, you can just hang out with them in the lab and talk to them while soldering because soldering is, is pretty lonely and boring if it's just you and on your own. Um, and then not, and once you finish soldering all the programming stuff, just like in the uh, last quarter um, for programming your uh, I2C C with your IMUs, um, we expect that you guys work together on that as well. And it, even more so for this, because I forgot to mention this beginning, I also have a little, little pep talk, but uh, this quarter, so before we always like happen, like kind of have the answers for you guys, once you guys don't have a an answer, this case, the very nature of making a drone now is very dependent on your own hardware and your own design and your, uh, your own like physical capabilities, maybe your motor's wrong. Like there are things that we can't test, especially because we're not there with you. So you and your team will have to figure out uh, a lot of it on your own and like try to put in work. And that's like the fun part about AP, right? Um, and not only that, to add on to that, Aaron did this in his freshman year. Uh, he, he and his team were able to get, uh, do very well, but um, he was also a freshman. So I remember you say that there's some things you didn't know back then. And for me, I didn't get to finish because last quarter, spring quarter. So I've my experience in this is purely conceptual. Oh, I've, I've done hands-on stuff, but like um, I won't necessarily have all the answers like I did for the past labs, which I've uh, like worked on very extensively. Um, so it, we really hope that you guys work together for, for uh, this quarter uh, and, and the, the requirements that we have for you. Um, and then other thing about check offs is if these times don't work for you guys, then um, schedule at least like a day beforehand. Now I have this mainly because I have lots of classes this quarter. So I, I'm worried that like, it'll be kind of hard to just like hop in like I did last quarter. Um, so make sure to just communicate to us if you can't make our lab hours specifically. Uh, to reiterate, yeah, like uh, Eric and I, we both don't have that much experience with like the uh, correct implementation of the PID controller for the hovering. So for the most part, we're going to be learning it with you guys, except we kind of have to learn it a little bit beforehand, but so we won't know the answer to everything if you guys have questions, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, uh, these are our lab hours. I, 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 cause I know that 90% of you guys probably would not have clicked that link. <laughs> so uh, the, the, these are the lab hours here um, in red. Um, so Tuesdays is when I'm in here. Now I, I it, first, uh, we're pretty open, especially early on. If you guys tell us like, oh, you're going to be bu really busy on Tuesdays and Mondays and like that weekend or something to like delay it to next Wednesday because I said that Wednesday, because Aaron will be uh, having lab hours that time. So primarily the, for the Tuesday and Wednesday hours was where you come, but if you start working on it early or if you're soldering throughout the week, Thursday too, we're going to be in lab and you can come hang out with us. Oh, and this is the other thing. If you guys are just bored four to four to six actually is where people like play games, like like rocket league and stuff so if you guys want to like hang out there it's also a thing i think like wednesday in the morning like i'm sorry early on like 12 is where people play like aram on league so if you guys wanted to hang out you guys can also go there i think i'll be there just to hang out sometimes but yeah <laughs> 
Um, honestly, there probably are. You, you, uh, if you, if you go to the hours, there's there's people there that are willing. Like it's it's just made to play games those hours. <laughs> okay, this is also again the detail the detailed summary. Yeah, if Aaron plays Aaron. Oh my god, you should, you guys should have seen him. He, he was like freaking monster when he was doing the human benchmark clicking thing. Yeah. Anyways, um, he has highlights that he shows me. <laughs> uh, this is a detailed summary. So we can skip this again, but this is if you're reading back on what I just said. Okay, we're almost done with the logistics. Shipping, you should have everything right now. Um, if you lose or damage a part when you're soldering, try to complete the rest of it. Uh, and that way we can ship rep uh, replacements um, to all together in case more things happen. Of course, try not to do this because we really don't want to ship replacements because it costs quite a bit. Um, and try not to burn your board because that, that specifically will be annoying because you can't continue until we ship it out to you. Um, this is what a battery charger is. I didn't have another place to put it, but you should have got this in, in your first shipment. I was worried that we didn't cover it, so you didn't know what it is. It's, uh, the, the left side is the USB plug. It goes into your computer. Right side is a battery. It's just a charger battery. <laughs> uh, make sure you don't like plug it in upside down into the, uh, on, onto the pins. So. Uh, into your USB port, because then that would be very yeah. bad. Yes. Okay, so there was a, I just want to clear up any confusion. I, 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 I hope we weren't too uh, ambiguous with what, is uh, what you might need. So and we're going to be very transparent here. The things that everyone will need is a soldering iron, solder, and, a so and some kind of a solder wick to like remove solder. Um, I have a link in the speaker notes of, uh, like I think it was $18, so that has a a bunch more other than this. It was also like tweezers and the solder sucker thing. It was like a whole kit. Um, there are soldering irons for uh, less than ten dollars, and you can, and also some kits, like very bare minimum kits. But you have to make sure that you have these three things. Um, and as always, as I'm going through this, if you guys have like any, uh, like you guys uh, want to talk to us about financials, like we can cover it on an individual basis. Um, but yes. Uh, Oh, wait, did I cover the expectations of a team? Wait, let me check the slides real quick when I talk about that. Give me one second, because I'm going to. OK. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot something for the expectations. Um, it's in the, can you go to the detailed slides? Oh, oh after, after. Uh, there's like a detail, uh, after. There's an expectation, like, detailed summary slide. The next slide, I think. Oh, I, I think I messed up. Um, where is it? Oh, it's after the lab hours. Oh, here, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so the one big thing is that our requirement is that this is a big one. Uh, every team should have one person who has the phys like is going to work physically on the soldering. This is at least one person. I know that most people want to work on this. Of course, you guys can all, if you guys, want the full experience too and you guys can't specifically pay for it we can always honestly i'm always down to just help like in the future if you go to uh, in person next quarter hopefully um the lab will be open you can always work on it as as you please uh but specifically for this year the criteria for completion is everyone um each team must have one member for completing the physical drone but all members have to be active in this process as well so that's one thing um Yeah, right, so I'll go back. Uh, yeah, so those are the required stuff and that'll be at least one person per team has that. These are the suggested tools and um, each one has a specific basis. Some teams will require a solder reflow station. And this was probably me and Aaron's like biggest mistake this year is that we didn't think about the fact that some of the parts, um, like especially the voltage regulators, mainly it's, it's pretty much only the voltage regulators that uh, your, pads were not exposed because it's like nested underneath and those require that you use solder paste. Some teams will require that. So because of that, we're going to cover a difference. We found uh, solder paste that's $10, he, uh, uh, a reflow station that is $30. The link is also in the slides under the speaker notes. So you can look at that. Um, and we will cover this cost if you show to us that your voltage regulator was, um, is like covered and the pad is not exposed. Um, and if you guys can choose how you want to use this money, um, but it's just to make sure that we can guarantee at least you guys have the resources you need. Um, as for other people, I still recommend having this if you guys want it. Uh, it honestly, it's 
doable without if you don't have that situation. Um, but yeah, so that, um, oh no, we haven't posted these slides. I, I will get to something about that in a second. So sorry about that. Um, multimeter, you guys can do without it. We have a little bit of alternatives, but it will be kind of uh, like, you'll be going in blind because you can't really look at your circuit physically. So you just have to be really careful when you solder. Um, and if you had a MIDAC because of like past classes, especially for our third years and second years, um, then that's great. If, you, if you're taking like E10 or 11, I, I think they have a new alternative. And if you're taking that class, um, you have their alternative, you can also have that as an sales scope, which would be great. Um, but it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not necessary for now. I think, yeah, uh, if you're in E3 this quarter, you got a uh, 82. That'll be pretty useful. You, I yeah. Think you continuity meter on that too. I, I know yeah. both the Davids are in there. And yeah, so the reflow station is the heat gun looking thing. And I, I just wanted to change the name because I, we colloquially call it a heat gun, but that's kind of ambiguous. So the solder reflow station is exactly what you're looking for. Um, and we have one link in there. The first one, I think, shows one that has both an iron and a reflow station. And the second one is just the reflow station is $30. So yeah, next slide. These are, if you really feel like it, it's not expensive, I'm just, yeah, but um, <laughs> you can have solder flux and isopropyl alcohol. Those are specifically used for cleaning. If you don't have this, make sure that the solder paste you get um, is a no clean solder paste. That's basically it. More about that in the lecture. When yes, yes, so you'll know to how to use content. these. <laughs> yeah, you know how to use these in a bit. This is just logistical stuff, okay. Um, other announcements. There's only one announcement here because I couldn't think of more until before this lecture. Um, and that's the posts, it posts and resources will be on the Facebook group. The website is not going to happen anymore because my computer broke. I didn't back it up. So I don't actually have the files and I don't want to go through Git and then download the, new, the resource and all that stuff. Um, and also I was pretty inconsistent with that too. So all the, the lectures, uh, and, uh, the slides, as well as the, um, uh, lecture recordings will be posted on the Facebook group as well as at labs. So uh, you'll have to look there. Um, as Aaron is going to do the next parts, I, I'll, I'll send the link right now in the chat. And this is what I'm going to do each time now um, to share the lecture link while we uh, go about the lecture. So now we can finally get to the actual lecture content. Thank you, Eric, for the announcements. But uh, yeah, so as Eric mentioned earlier, this this quarter you're finally going to be able to assemble and solder your uh, your air copter, and uh, as you can see in this little picture, uh, it's a little SMD, a couple SMDs, and fortunately for you guys, your uh, your MCU has like what double or quadruple the number of pins, so that'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. To cover SMD components, you guys, we've reiterated that, oh, we recommend that you guys use all SMD components as opposed to through-hole components uh, because of the space constraints. So uh, the, the two types are SMD and through-hole. And so for through-hole, as you can see in the image on the top right, you have uh, physical connections that go through the PCB that you solder. Whereas for SMD, it's only soldered on one side of the board. And for through-hole components, you get like stronger connections and mechanical bonding because of the fact that it's like uh, poking through the circuit board. And uh, some detriments though, are that you have to drill holes through the PCB for through-hole components. And that means that you have a lot less routing area. And uh, through-hole components, however, are really good for prototyping. They're easily swappable. so. Uh, if you have like devices, the same package, you can swap them out and test like, for example, uh, frequency responses or like filtering and stuff. Um, or in the case of like breadboards, uh, you don't need to like desolder or resolder all the time for your PCB. You can't do that with SMD components. Um, while for SMD components, the smaller uh, footprints lead to like smaller and denser PCBs. So you can like print more PCBs per dollar, stuff like that. And uh, it also saves a lot of space. And so SMD components are what you'll see in a lot of like assembled commercial products, like uh, your phones, uh, what else, your computers and stuff, lots of lots of SMD components. You'll rarely see through hole components there. Uh, and uh, another benefit is that you can use both sides for mounting devices, whereas through PC, uh, for through hole components, since it's going like all the way through the board, you can only mount one device per footprint on the entire board. Uh, and yeah, so 
Uh, we also mentioned device packages, you know, uh, with your very tiny, tiny capacitors and resistors, you'll see that yeah, you got the 0603 Imperials and be, be happy we didn't make you guys use the, the metric 0603s, but yeah, so there's a lot of different packages uh, for several different devices. You might recognize like the uh, uh, SOD package for the diodes, your SOT23s for your uh, transistors, among others, but yeah, so uh, that, that's why we like, how do you guys try to make sure that your uh, circuit schematics and PCBs were had, had the correct packages? Because as you can see, like some of these devices wouldn't be compatible with other footprints. And so uh, in this lecture, we'll go, it'll, it'll go pretty fast. We'll just be covering like how to solder SMD components. Uh, IEEE does have a, a, a workshop recording uh, I believe it was last quarter for SMB soldering and they they go like a lot more into detail but uh, for this we'll be like covering more in the scope of uh, soldering your uh, air copter since your components will be a lot different but yeah so primarily we have your your options are using a soldering iron pretty difficult and then heat gun and reflow ovens are the most convenient so yeah so uh, with respect to using a soldering iron in this little fancy GIF, GIF, I'll say both in case I am about to get like ostracized <laughs> for the wrong pronunciation. But yeah, so uh, the first step is always to tin the pad. So you'll want to uh, press your soldering iron up to the pad to heat it up so that it's um, hot enough for uh, the solder to melt. And then you just apply a tiny bit of solder to the pad in preparation for like mounting the device. And so in step two is to solder the pin of your device to the pad that you just tinned. So you'll typically want a pair of fine tweezers for this. And so as you can see, once the, uh, the pin is soldered on, the device is more or less fixed. And then you can move on to the next step, which is soldering the other pins as shown here. So then you can quickly solder the remaining pins of, in this case, a tactile button to your PCB. I'll just let this play out. Yeah, and um, common mistakes when SMD soldering is that your device isn't flush on the board. So if, for example, if, uh, if you tinned both sides of the board or if you don't wait for the solder to completely cool before removing your tweezers, you might accidentally like tilt up your SMD device and that might result in the image on the left. So in this case, it's not a very good connection. It's literally gravity that's, uh, that's connecting uh, your second pad to the other half of your device. And so, which is why we recommend soldering half of it on first and uh, tinning the pad first and then soldering on half of the device and then afterwards uh, soldering the other half of the device. And that, that would be how you achieve the uh, figure on the right. So you want your SMD device flush with your PCB. And uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it is very difficult to solder your MC without bridges. And flux is quite possibly the most magical substance on the planet when it comes to soldering. So um, with respect to like hand soldering with a soldering iron, uh, your MCUs, so you'll want to solder uh, the corner pins first. So as you can see in the image on the left, uh, the top, the yeah, top left most pin is soldered on. And if you want like additional stability, you can also solder in the, uh, the bottom right. And uh, as you solder, you can apply flux to the pins. And um, what the flux does is it helps the solder bind to the pads and the pins without bridging. So uh, for example, um, I wish I had a, oh, okay, wait, I forgot. There's more image. Peter? Oh, wait, actually, no, there isn't, my bad. But yeah, so you'll want to brush on solder. Uh, so you'll want to brush on flux as you solder because uh, then as you apply solder, the as you melt the solder on the pins, the solder will essentially be forced to bind with the pads themselves and the pins as opposed to um, bridging across pins. But, and 
unfortunately, errors are unavoidable. So there, are, it's more likely than not that um, as you solder, you'll encounter something called bridges, which is when two pins are uh, connected when they shouldn't be. As you can see in the image on the left, the uh, top of the left side of the MCU is bridged. I don't know if you can see the mouse cursor, but yeah, so that's bridged and we don't want that. So uh, you'll definitely want to check for bridges before you turn on your MCU, because if like uh, two pins are shorted, it could essentially damn, destroy your MCU. Like if uh, VCC and VDD are shorted, no bueno, right? So um, yeah, bridges, highly uncool. So uh, if you have a solder wick, all you really have to do is uh, place the wick on top of the bridge and then heat up the wick with your soldering iron. But uh, uh, you'll want to be careful, though, because holding like a 400 degree Celsius object close to very sensitive silicon uh, for too long could result in damage. So you, you don't want to just like hold it and be like, oh, why is it not melting? And then just keep holding your soldering iron there. You'll want to... Uh, give it a little time to cool off before you continue trying to clear the bridge. But yeah, so soldering with uh, a hand soldering your device devices onto your PCB is going to be a little bit difficult, uh, which is why we highly recommend a, uh, a reflow station uh, as shown here. So the steps for uh, heat guns and using an actual reflow oven are really similar. Um, in uh, in the context of applying the solder paste and placing the component on and applying heat, both are identical. It's just one is you throw it into an oven and the other one is you just apply the heat using the heat gun itself. But yeah, it, it's super magical. Like I, I got these clips from a, a YouTube video, right? So this dude, he just slathered on the uh, solder paste. Oh, so solder paste. Uh, solder paste uh, is, it's like little uh, solder balls that are suspended in flux. So you get like this paste and you just throw it on on the pads here right and so then you just plop the component on just make sure you line up the uh, the pads beforehand right and then you apply heat and then because the because of the fact that the solder is already suspended in flux then the flux melts and then it binds the pads of the pins and then the the solder melts and then it's just magic it's literally magic but yeah <laughs> Uh, but as Eric mentioned earlier, not all solder paste are created equal. So um, as I mentioned, solder paste is a mixture of like uh, solder balls suspended in like flux, right? And so depending on what solder paste you buy, you might have to clean it. So uh, there's three types of uh, solder paste depending on which one you get. So um, cleaning isn't that difficult. It's you just like rub it with like rubbing alcohol or water. Uh, so uh, the first is rosin-based solder paste. Um, it's made from like this pine tree tar, and uh, that's that's where the flux is made from. And you'll have to use isopropyl alcohol to clean that one. Um, it's pretty grody. But yeah, and then there's like water-soluble. Uh, uh, water-soluble, you can clean with just like a brush and water. Um, it's super organic, um, but uh, you still need to clean it. And then there's no clean solder, which is uh, what was shown in the image before. So the, this, there's like no, virtually no residue at all other than like burnt flux. But uh, for the most part, for no clean solder, you don't, you don't really need to clean it. Um, and yeah, uh, for your solder paste, it's really important, uh, last line, store your solder paste in low temperatures if you want to like use it in the future because then it'll oxidize. And if it oxidizes too much, then your solder paste will not work anymore. Uh, yeah, and uh, in the image on the right, uh, this IPC de designation, it's not really relevant for us because uh, we're not really too, honestly, I don't even know what all these different particle sizes are, are for in the grand scheme of like uh, soldering, using the solder paste, but you know, I, I thought it might be relevant. And super important, don't solder your diamonds on backwards because we cannot, we, we, Eric and I have no way of verifying if you soldered your uh, diodes on backwards and you don't want to reverse bias them, which will, if you, I, I don't think the voltage will be high enough to make them explode, but they just won't work, your LEDs and stuff. Um, yeah, so diodes, they have polarity. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, Eric, what was that? Oh, your, your motor won't work because all the current ends up going oh, into yeah. the diode. 
that too. I was just thinking about the LEDs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the flyback diodes, uh, make sure you don't solder those on backwards. Super important. Um, but yeah, you can refer to your data sheet. Uh, it'll probably be some sort of indication or marking on your diodes to figure out what uh, orientation they're supposed to be soldered on. Uh, yeah. And so pro programming your MCU is very similar uh, versus like programming your uh, nucleo from the labs last quarter. So uh, it's just like a couple additional steps that need to be made. So um, in order to program an MCU, I know if, if you guys have done micro mouse already, uh, you might remember like having to snap off the board. Please do not do that. Uh, we want to keep the, uh, the MCUs in one piece for next year. Uh, but yeah, so in order to program an external MCU, you all you have to do is switch the attached programmer to ST-Link mode. And um, in the past for MicroMouse, I, I don't really remember why they had you snap it off, but uh, in Aircopter Project, all you have to do is disconnect the jumpers circled in red. So uh, right now on your board, these jumpers are all turned so that the the top pin and the top middle pin are connected and the bottom pin and the bottom middle pin are connected. And what that does is that uh, connects the programmer to the onboard microcontroller unit. So that was how you were able to program the onboard uh, MCU in the labs last quarter. And so what we want you to do is to disconnect them as shown in the image circled in red. Uh, and please do not lose those jumpers. Uh, having to buy jumpers, they're, they're not expensive, but it's annoying because then we'll have like a billion jumpers that we don't need. Um, so you can like leave them attached like so, they won't fall off. Or another option is to like place them somewhere for safekeeping, like maybe in a plastic bag or something. Um, please do not lose those. Uh, yeah, and so once your uh, jumpers are disconnected, then your programmer is officially in ST-Link mode, ready for an external MCU. And then that CN4 header circled in blue becomes the uh, the six pins that you can uh, connect to your custom PCB to begin programming your own, uh, your second MCU. And uh, I this is all in the data sheet for the uh, Nucleo. We can include this on the uh, lab spec. Oh, we can add that later. Um, but yeah, so this is like the pin diagram. So uh, starting from the bottom is pin one, I believe. And so that'll be uh, VDD and then followed by SW clock, ground, STDIO, your reset, and et cetera. So it'll be more or less the same from there. After after connecting all this to the appropriate headers on your PCB, everything else is the same. And uh, then <clears throat> you just make a new project on Cube ID, and then it's identical to how you programmed your labs last quarter. And so, uh, Eric, did you want to cover this, or do you want me to do this? Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> I made changes to the slide like last second <laughs> because oh, okay. I realized I forgot something's important. Okay, wait, I can uh, um, here. Ah. here. Uh -huh. Yeah. There. Okay. So a few, a few big tips. We have a section under the lab um, that co uh, like covers a bunch of tips that you should definitely read before you get started. Um, in addition, there's also a video that kind of goes through the soldering process as well as the desoldering process, which might be helpful for you. So make sure this time to like read everything before you get started. The biggest tips though, if I want to summarize for you guys, is get in your head. Start with the hardest things because you don't want to, for example, solder all your passives on and then realize that you messed up the MCU because it's difficult and it's the first time doing it and then have to desolder everything. So um, I recommend you start with the MCU and uh, voltage regulators first even though we tell you that you first want to do the voltage regulator circuit, still put the MCU on um, first. Uh, of course, try your best to not have to desolder because desoldering in itself is, is pretty annoying. Um, secondly, make sure work inc incrementally. Don't solder everything on at once and then just hope that it works. Check your work because we did kind of break this up into a bunch of sub circuits as we went through it throughout the, the, the year. 
Um, so you have like your power system from voltage regulator and you have your MCU and your motor drivers and whatnot work incrementally so you can actually check your work, like make sure that your voltage regulator is outputting 3.3 before you start trying to program to your MCU, for example. Um, desoldering with an iron, don't use a heat gun for it because um, you need a higher heat to desolder than you need to solder once uh, your solder, especially if you're using solder paste. Solder paste will chemically change after it's been, um, uh, it's gone through the refill process. So, uh, it will need a higher melting point and you will need a higher localized temperature. Um, and secondly, uh, if you are if you have a heat gun and that's what you're using, don't put the JSTs on first because that's what I did and it, it can melt your JSTs. It will melt your JSTs if you leave it on for too long. Um, so yeah, don't, don't put the JSTs on first. Definitely leave it to the end if you're going if you're planning on using a heat gun. Even if you're not planning on using a heat gun and later on you decide you want to, just, just leave the JSTs to the end. It's not, it's not a big deal. Yeah, so yeah, again, make sure to read all, all the tips in the soldering section uh, before you get started. Okay, that's uh, the, whole, the whole lecture. I hope that, are there any questions for this, first of all? I know that was like a ton of announcements and a ton of content as well, but. All right, I mean, you can also write in the chat as I'm talking, but um, if you have any questions, you can ask it now so everyone can see. Uh, but he, yeah, so our next lab is the next two weeks. The first checkpoint is just proof that you started. It's due this week on Thursday. Uh, in addition, we're going to, it, I wrote this in the lab spec, we're asking for a document. Specifically, this is new this year because we want to include all your team's like plans for completion as well as the accommodations and needs such as if we need to reimburse a, a, a reflow station and whatnot. Um, so talk to your team about that and make sure you have a document that ensures that you guys can all, all complete this year. Um, secondly, uh, your, our checkpoint two is due next week. Um, and that's just to get a working voltage regulator circuit that outputs 3.3 volts. Um, and that's Tuesday, uh, and, uh, of next week. And then, uh, if you don't have a multimeter, if you have a multimeter, this becomes really easy. If you don't have a multimeter, you will have to, um, you, uh, for outputting 3.3 volts, you'll have to use like a voltage divider circuit. So you can use your nucleo to see what the voltage is um, and show that to us. Uh, check, uh, and we don't have very specific details for that, but that should be pretty straightforward. Unless if you have questions, just, you can ask us. Um, checkpoint three is uh, the final checkpoint of this. And it's just completing soldering of everything. Now you don't have to, um, and, and the workflow for this still should be, completing, for example, your MCU and your LED circuit, and then doing the uh, testing and then doing the rest of it, um, and then completing all soldering. So we hope that you come to show us or talk to us maybe, like quite a bit beforehand, showing us your MP, M, uh, MCU and, and programming capabilities. Um, but by the end of this, we will uh, ho hope that we've seen that your uh, LED, you can program an LED and also you've completed all the soldering. Um, and that way we can move forward and work on, on the flight of the drone. Cool. Last slide um, that I forgot to put in until like last minute because like while Aaron was talking, <laughs> I forgot about, this is a really important announcement. So for those of you who want to like stay a part of the IEEE community um, in the future, either, I think the main ways you can do that is by doing general board or another project such as like micro mouse dav or uh, rap. Um, but if you want to say, okay, get more involved in the community, um, you can apply to be part of the IEEE board. Um, and this ranges from stuff like uh, um, there are like administrative things such as like workshops or or um, uh, publicity and things like that that all of you are have the eligibility to apply for. I believe um, you can check the general document for the details on that. Another thing is if you guys want to apply to be AP lead, um, I, and hopefully some of you guys are. And I can assure to you guys that I, I've talked to a few people just because like while we were talking, we talked about it. But I, I think the general concept is that most people think that like they might not be prepared technically for AP as an AP lead. But I can assure you that you guys are all at like the same point or at a better point than I was when I entered AP lead in terms same. of like, yeah, in terms of, of knowledge. And I can really assure you that because like we were able to really hands-on work with you guys this, uh, this, uh, this year. So if you guys have any, any, like I, like with all of you guys, I think that if you guys have the right preparation that we, we, I think I would be comfortable with, like easily comfortable with 
having AP in the future for you, uh, held by you guys. Um, so it, but if you guys have any like doubts or questions, definitely come talk to us because me like joining, I, I decided to do AP like very last minute. I wasn't planning to, on applying at all for AP lead, but honestly, it was like a really good decision because like I would not have met any of the IEEE people or honestly any of you guys as well um, had it not been for uh, me joining AP lead, uh, becoming AP lead. So if you guys have any questions or concerns uh, that you guys want to just hash out and talk to me and Aaron about, we'll be, we'll be very transparent with you on what might be very difficult and how likely it be and, and whatnot, um, because we genuinely don't want to put you in a, in a bad position next year. We want to help you guys. So um, come talk to us if you have any questions uh, regarding that, or even just to let us know that you're planning on applying, because um, that, that, that's just nice for us to know as well. Um, these are the dates. The exec board apps you don't need to be worried about. But this is specifically for people who are on actually board before. But I want to put this in here to contrast admin board um, because admin board is open to you guys, I'm pretty sure. Um, you can check the general document again. So that would be the like logistical stuff that's not projects, basically. Um, and that's due April 17th. And then projects application is due April 22nd. Um, for If you're doing admin board, I believe you have to do an elections process. Whereas project boards are a little different where you will have like an interview process with us and also possibly the past leads. Um, so general documents there. If you, if you guys aren't considering applying to uh, one, uh, be on the actually board, then at, uh, you guys can also apply to vote for your uh, next year's election, especially like, I think it, uh, me and Aaron, are, cause me and Aaron are both applying this stuff next, uh, uh, um, Next yeah, year. applying things next year. So um, you guys can come and vote as well. Just, just, just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. But uh, the voter registration is there. You guys are all eligible because you've done a project with IEEE. E. And the application forward, uh, uh, form is right there. I think for admin board, you have to be part of a GB, though. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I think um, so. So they can only run for, you guys can only, right. if you're not part of a GB, you can only run for projects. I see. Yeah. Okay. That, that's my bad then. Um, but yeah, all the information is on the document Yeah, and, and you will see that. Uh, so yeah. No, Bye. I'm definitely not going to be EVP, David. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. It's a little scary. It's yeah. quite, a bit, quite a bit of work. I, I ain't trying to do idea hacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for listening. I know that was a lot of information. Um, try to look back on the slides if you forget some logistics stuff and hopefully... Um, this is weird. This is like kind of a blanket thing so that everyone knows what direction they can take. A lot of teams will be in different places throughout this quarter. So once you guys do the first checkpoint, which kind of tells us about your plans for completion in terms of like who will be doing it and, and, what, and what you might need for that, hopefully it'll be clear what specifically your team will need. Um, yeah, I, ho I hope that that's helpful. I really want to make sure that the logistics were transparent since it's kind of, it's, it's very difficult for us to do uh remotely it's it's been it's been a question uh, like it's it's been hard but hopefully this works out for you guys um yeah that, that that's that's all we have so thanks for coming um if you guys have any questions let me know right now well, I, have a, I have a couple of questions um most just like what do i what do i do if i'm super freaking behind uh, you're, you're not, okay. I will talk to you about it after. Um, you're not, you're not crazy. Yeah, you're not, you're not that behind. Yeah, honestly, because like a lot of the, the, the work from the last lab um, is preloading for when you're doing your programming. So it's, it's pretty simple to figure out. Um, but yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it after. Yeah. Any other burning questions? Uh, I'm probably going to end the recording soon. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Oh yeah, I have a question. So uh after soldering, I'm trying to like figure out what I should do before plugging in the battery so that I don't screw everything up. Is there any like safety precautions that you guys would suggest like to check first? Like I already yeah. um, I already probed around with the uh, multimeter for like connectivity and stuff like that. And check the impedance between positive and negative. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got like I think 20k, something like that. Oh, that's perfectly fine. That is that's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, so yeah, at the very least, it won't blow up. Nothing, nothing terrible will happen. That's for sure. Okay, perfect. Um, and if I can personally say, if it does happen, that is me and Aaron's fault 
because we don't know what we're saying there. But yeah, <laughs> okay. it will not yeah. blow up. Um, and then just make sure that your voltage regulator is working from the other side, on the output side. Yeah, yeah just we'll, check uh, if it's outputting 3.3. Okay, so I'll plug it in first and then check 3.3. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a battery connected to your your battery? Oh, we know it wouldn't it wouldn't matter. Sorry, it, I was asking about LED, but since it's twenty k, it's it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Newton asked. I just ordered my soldering stuff. Will I still be on schedule? Yeah, you will. So we have mm -hmm. two to three, a little bit more than two weeks set aside for uh, soldering. So uh, our even though our first checkpoint is this Thursday, it's just to see that you've like started. So mm -hmm. um, even so that. If yeah, so specifically for like if you are or, like don't have your stuff yet and you've ordered it, um, we will take that like I, like as a, the first checkpoint. But we want we still want to make sure, of course, the moment it comes here that you do start. So just um, we might ask you to to catch up us on that. But yeah, so um, it, the first checkpoint, the proof of starting, you can also say ordering. And I need to add that into the lab spec too. I kind of forgot. Yeah. About that. So yeah. All good. For sure. All right. In that case, I will stop the recording. Oh, how do I stop? <laughs>